I know you got a very important story about the yellow vest that's happening over there in France, the large protests. Paul, why don't you take it away? Yeah, so this is one of these fascinating things that doesn't really hit the news a lot in the United States, and that is a, sort of a real deep dive and understanding of what's going on with the Yellow Vest movement in France. Um, it's really an uprising of regular people who are not happy with Macron and, and his policies, tax issues, financial issues that overburden the regular people. And uh, what I'm bringing today is a story about the riot suppression tactics. So uh, the Yellow Vest movement, they're wearing these Yellow Vests in solidarity with one another, and they're mobilizing and getting out in the street. And law enforcement in France has ramped up their game. So they're using a, quote unquote, less lethal type of um, gun, essentially, uh, that's referred to as flashballs. Um, or Defense Ball Launchers, LBDs. Um, it's, I think the acronym is because it's French. I don't actually know what the French word for it is, but they're called Defense Ball Launchers, and people call them flashballs. They shoot at roughly 100 meters per second. It's a 40-centimeter wide ball, um, and it's designed to be less lethal. This reminds me a lot of the riot suppression tactics that happened in Ferguson a few years ago, All right. Um or even the riot suppression tactics that were used at the Dakota Access Pipeline. Right. Uh, if you remember, there was an activist in the Dakota Access Pipeline who lost her arm as the result of a, uh, a gas canister being yeah, and fired. Yeah, and there's a few others that suffered uh, other cri crippling injuries as well. Exactly. So similar to that, in France, uh, there are a number of people who have come up with major injuries as a result of these flashballs, which the company that manufactures them uses the slogan, it hits like Tyson, right? It's supposed to be like a... a punch to the chest kind of but oh these God. are really not exactly less lethal like people are getting pretty major injuries and pretty permanent lasting damage from them mm -hmm. um the company that makes them says that they should only be using the uh, munitions that they produce um so that they can be as accurate as possible when they're fired so that they don't accidentally hit someone's eye or some place like that um but uh it's it's noted that the uh the French police are using munitions purchased by a third party via the United States, uh, and there's some question as to whether those are as soft uh, or as accurate. Um, and so that is yielding more uh, injury and more uh, uh, long-lasting uh, ailments for people who are out in the street and protesting. Yeah. And this is one of those, like, it just... It just kind of makes me go nuts when uh, I'm, I'm thinking about... This is established power working against the will of the people mm -hmm. using a type of force that they have deemed is appropriate but is clearly excessive. You know, what, 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 how I look at this is that this is a way to make people afraid of everyone wanting to protest or even challenging the system that is so already so corrupt. There's a reason why all those people in the yellow vests are stepping up and protesting the street. Well, you have a neoliberal system. It's n not only is it here in the United States, but it's overseas as well, where you have uh, politicians that are bought and sold by corporations or billionaires, and they pass these unfair neoliberal policies. Now, the thing is, the recent president of France, he barely won his election against a, a quote-unquote Trump-like candidate as well. Le Pen. And yeah, Le Pen. And, and the thing is, is that the very fact that this kind of brutality, this kind of oppression was put on these protesters says a lot about that current administration and really the policies that's being implemented in France. And the thing is, there, people have every right to rally and hold uh, decorums and, and debates and really challenge the system. But if, if the response from the government is shoot everyone down, mace them down, uh, you know, put them all up in prison, you know, make them afraid, it's not going to work. It's going to motivate people to get, give them more power and also say, here's the evidence of how inept and corrupt our system is. It's willing to hurt its own citizens. And the very fact that these kind of weapons are designed like that, it hits like Tyson. Well, I wonder how many innocent people were hit. I mean, peaceful protesters. Did they really, really, really need to use those weapons like that? I don't think so. Not at all. So the nonprofit group Human Rights League wrote, the lack of sufficient guarantees in French law undermines the constitutional right of life and respect for physical safety. That's, I mean, man, that sums it up, right? 
This is a fascistic tactic being employed by the government of France against regular citizens who have a legitimate grievance against their government. Um, I would I would say that we need something like the Yellow Vest movement here in the United States. Um, we see pockets of it um, localized occasionally. I mentioned Ferguson. I mentioned yeah. the Dakota Access Pipeline. Yeah. But, man, uh, they're getting things done yeah. in a big way. And you know that they're getting things done when you have a response like this, an official response that is less lethal. Yeah. And, again, it's, it really says a lot about how, how you know, the, the kind of response it's done towards protesters. Look, everyone, whether you're conservative, liberal, socialist, doesn't matter. You know, you have a right to rally and protest and have your voice heard, especially in a democracy, which is, uh, you know, something that democracies have. People do have a right to make their opinions heard. And we, yeah, we're not going to agree with each other. But the last thing you want to do is use uh, true force to silence people who have true grievances with the government. And see, the problem that we have, again, this goes down to the main problem. It's not... Democratic voters versus Republican voters versus independent voters. We have a neoliberal system here in the United States, but also internationally as well, that is basically dividing us. And with neoliberalism, it only works for one group, and that's the top 1%. The prison industrial complex, the military industrial complex, Wall Street, the big banks, and corporations. They've convinced us by buying our media. They've convinced us that one side's right, one side's wrong, and we don't know. Whoever wins, wins, but we're not going to tell you what's really happening. We're not going to talk to you about the issues. We're not going to talk to you about policies. We're not going to talk to you about anything else. We're just going to leave you guys there. And if you dare even step up, we're going to you know, mow you down. And that's, it's nuts. And so thankfully, you know, people are actually covering this and talking about this story. But it's, just, it's another example of just you know, the brutality that's out there by silencing protesters but at the same time, too, you got protesters and people stepping up, too. Paul, you want to have any final words? Um, more power to the people of France uh, um, for standing up for what they believe in and getting out there and protesting and putting themselves on the line um, in the face of these uh, flashball weapons. More power to you guys.